Well, hi everyone. For those who haven't met us yet, my name's Steve Walton. I'm the principal here at Cedars. And my name's Julie Cochran and I'm the deputy principal. You know, whether you're new to the school or even if you've been part of our community for many years, we want to congratulate you for choosing Cedars. As principal, part of my role here is working with the teaching staff to ensure they're well equipped and supported as educators. I want you to know that the teaching staff at Cedars view their role in educating your child as a partnership. We believe that this is a shared responsibility between the school and the parents and it enables us to maximise not just the educational outcomes but the well-being of each child in our care. While our students are very important to us, equally so are the parents in the Cedars community. Let me tell you why. Because when the relationship between the school and the parent is a strong positive one, then the achievement in all areas of the students is higher. Specifically, students with parents or other caregivers who are actively engaged in their child's education and within the school community, they achieve higher grades, have increased social skills and enhanced wellbeing. As the principal of Cedars, I'm extremely proud of this school community and I believe that the education we offer to our students is unique and special. Our college is unashamedly Christian and our curriculum is presented by our capable teachers from a biblical worldview. Our vision is to work in partnership with families, inspire and guide students to develop the skills and knowledge and values needed to fulfil their potential as confident, creative individuals and engage with their world. Well, as well as delivering quality learning experiences for our students, we're very intentional in developing skills and traits which we've identified as being the characteristics of a CEDAS student. These traits are all aspirational in nature and all our students have the support of CEDAS staff who seek to provide opportunities for students to develop in these areas and provide guidance, direction and encouragement. These characteristics reflect our college values of being a Christ-centred and biblically-based educational community. Can you tell me what some of our characteristics are, Mr Walton? You're going to test me out. Yes, we want our students to have faith in God, respect, self-discipline, compassion, humility and a spirit of excellence. Fantastic, you did a great job. While many parents who are watching this video may be at the start of the education journey with their child, let me tell you as someone who's been there and done that, the journey goes by very, very quickly. Before you know it, you'll be seated in the Cedars Leadership Centre with tears in your eyes and beaming with pride as your child receives their graduation certificate in Year 12. Over the last few weeks, I've had the privilege of writing a number of references for our graduating Year 12 students. And as I reflected back on each of their individual journeys, many who have been here at Cedars since prep, I could see how much they had grown, how much they had learned, and how these seven characteristics are now very evident in their lives and are already being outworked in the wider community. And it makes me very happy to know that our students leave he here equipped and ready to go out and make a positive difference in the world. Well, that's enough from us, okay. but uh, coming up next, you're gonna hear from Rebecca Kite, who is our middle school coordinator, to give you some more specific information about entering year seven in 2021. Thank you for joining me for Smart Start 2021 for Year 7. My name is Rebecca Cott and I'm the Middle School Coordinator. It's lovely to have you here and I hope you find this information session really helpful and that it answers lots of your questions. Some of the questions you might have may be able to be answered from information in the student handbook which is just below in the link. Uh, some of the things that are answered in this handbook include bell times and uniform shop hours um, and other important information. So please do have a read through that as it is um, a really helpful resource. I'm now going to outline uh, some key people within our school that might be relevant to you and, and just so that you can get a bit of a feel about our college. The first is our college principal, Mr. Steve Walton, and the second is our deputy principal that you have just heard from, Mrs. Julie Cochran. We then have Mrs. Kellyanne Guest. She is the Director of Secondary and she is in charge of all things curriculum. So everything that's taught in the classroom, she oversees NAP plans, standardised testing, all those kinds of things. We have the Director of Wellbeing, Mr. Tim Johnson, and he is in charge of making sure like behaviour plans and um, management and wellbeing projects are overseen across K to 12. 
We have Mr. Dave Carter, he is our IT director and he uh, looks after all our school database management. Um, he looks after C-Hub, which is a really important tool that you'll become quite familiar with if you're new parents and I'm sure you would have already seen if you are existing parents. Um, he is also available as a resource to students when technology gets a little bit more challenging and something's going wrong, they can go to him as well. Mrs. Vanessa Bradford is our Director of Learning Enhancement and she is um, in charge of helping students who have individual plans. So if your child has an individual plan, whether they're gifted or whether they need remediation, uh, she will assist with that and, and talk to you about the kinds of strategies we're going to use in the classroom to assist uh, your child. Um, my name, like I said, is Rebecca Cott and I'm the middle school coordinator. I um, help oversee camps, I help oversee wellbeing projects within middle school, I look after discipline and welfare um, and I support the partial care teachers that look after the kids on a day-to-day -day basis. We also have Mrs. Helen Booth. She's available as our school psychologist to speak with um, any student from K to Year 12. The process is if a student's feeling down or there's something going on in their life that they'd like to talk to somebody about, someone more than their pastoral care teacher that's weighing on them, they're able to access that service. And what we ask is that parents sign a consent form so that we have permission um, for Helen to speak to your child. They then um, have some sessions with Helen and she's able to communicate with you about the best course of action. Do they need ongoing support or is this some strategies that the classroom teachers can put into place to really assist them with what's going on in their life? Um, the heads of department um, are an important source for your child because they um, look after the individual subjects that they'll be taking. They're responsible for um, helping set assessment tasks and making sure assessment schedules are um, working and so you your child doesn't have two or three or four assignments in one week. They coordinate that to make life a little bit easier for Year 7 students. So you can see their names um, in front of you and they are points of contact if you're having bigger concerns than what the classroom teacher is able to answer. The two most important people, however, for your child next year are the pastoral care teachers. They are the teachers that are with the students every single day. They see them in pastoral care, which is from 10.05 to 10.20, where they do devotions and praise and worship with the kids. They ask how they're going, they check in with them, they teach them for subjects, and they are the kids' first point of call. So if your child is concerned about something or just feeling a little lost, that is the first person they go to, and it would be the first person that you contact as well if you've got some concerns or just have a question that you think, oh, I don't know the answer to that. Ask them first, they're happy to help, they're lovely people, and they are Mrs. Kate Morris and Mr. Mark Peters, and he is gonna be new on site with us next year, but he is a great guy, and I know that you seven are gonna love him. Um, in Year 7, we have a recognition system for um, positive behaviour and really great work ethic um, and it's very similar to what we use in the Year 5-6 classroom based on commendations. So what happens is the kids are doing a great job at something, they're getting excellent results or they're being seen in the playground to be exemplary, they get a commendation. When they get to 15 commendations, they get a bronze award and then another 15, they get a silver and another 15 and they get to gold. Once they get a gold award, we do a write-up in the newsletter on them, we invite them to a special morning tea and we make a big fuss about them because it is a big deal. Uh, if a child gets to 14 awards at the end of the year and they don't quite make the gold award, don't panic because what happens is we carry that over to the next year. So as soon as they get that single more commendation, they then get their gold award. So that system is where the teachers recognize the kids' effort and um, work. The other system that we have in place is one where students recognize each other. We get them to nominate each fortnight what kinds of kids in the classroom, who in the classroom has been demonstrating the characteristics of a C student? Are they being resilient? Are they being faithful? Are they being striving for excellence? Those are the kinds of things that students can be nominated for. It's an anonymous thing, but then the teachers collect them and they tally them up and each fortnight, uh, two students, normally a boy and a girl, get nominated from each class and they get some kind of prize as well as being written up in the newsletter and having a congratulations shake with myself at chapel. Uh, they're the two biggest ways that we recognise achievement on a week to week kind of basis. Obviously we have awards assemblies uh, that are bigger occasion events, but they're less frequent throughout the year. 
Uniform in year seven is the same as uniform in year five and six if you're an existing parent. If you're a new parent, there's information in the handbook about uniform. We have two different uniforms. We have a summer and a winter uniform. Uh, the winter uniform just includes longer pants for the boys and a tab tie for the girls. Same shirts. The boys are allowed to wear long sleeve shirts in the winter. Um, they can wear the same jumper all year round. Thursdays is the day that they wear sports uniform all day. In year seven, some kids get confused between sport and PE. PE is a subject that they take where they come to school in their normal school uniform, the teacher gives them time to go to the bathrooms, they get changed, they participate in PE, they get changed back into their full school uniform and continue on for the rest of the day in their classes. Sport does only happen in one period at the end of the day. However, they're allowed to wear their sport uniform all day and that is on a Thursday. Shoes are really important in year seven. They help keep their feet nice and safe um, and we would like the kids to have full black leather shoes with their full academic uniform. We would like them to be similar to the ones that you can see on this slide in front of you. Lace up, um, not Velcro straps with a heel on them and not the black joggers that are leather that you buy from Foot Locker and those kind of places, but lace up shoes with a heel. So if in any doubt, check the handbook or the slide in front of you, because they're the kind of shoes that we're talking about. Uh, we don't want students wearing canvas shoes um, or boots. They need to be very, very much similar to the photos that you can see in front of you. In year seven, the bell times are slightly different to in year six, if you're an existing parent. Um, in year seven, the bell time finishes at 3.20. The start time is the same, it's 8.45. Parents are encouraged to pick up their children via the pickup lane or they can catch the school bus home. Uh, we would really encourage you not to park out the front of the school, but to still use pickup lane as the safest place for um, middle school students to be picked up. The bell times are on there. Again, if you're having any questions about bell times, you can direct them to the pastoral care teachers. If your child needs to leave early on a day, they have an orthodontist appointment or something's come up, what they need to do is uh, just come to school as normal. You contact the front office and let them know, or you can contact the pastoral care teacher and they can let the front office know, and then the child will be let to leave. You'll just collect them from the front office. If they arrive late, there's a late signing book at the front office, and I'll go through that with the kids in the first um, day of school. In 2021, one of the most exciting things for Year 7 is camp. And that happens really early in the year. In fact, it's in week four. So you can expect in week one to actually get an email from a program called Consent to Go, which is where we do all our permission notes for all our excursions the whole year. In that Consent to Go permission note, it will have all the information you need to know about uh, our camp. It is to Telford and Rathane up in the Port Hacking River at the Youth Works site. It's a really, really fun camp. The main objectives of camp are to build friendships and to um, push yourself. So we, that's what we encourage from, from Year 7. We do not make Year 7 do anything that they don't want to do on camp. We do take them rock climbing and abseiling, but if, if they just want to look at the wall and not and actually go down or go up it, that's completely fine. We do a swim test, there's a lot of water activities. It's a really, really fun time, and it's something that uh, the kids actually talk about all year long afterwards. In Year 7 and 8, um, that's called Stage 4, and they do a range of different subjects which are on this, um, the screen in front of you. In Year 7, they have the core subjects, English, Maths, Science. In Year 7, they do Geography, whereas in Year 8, they do History. In Year 7, they do 50% of the year, so one semester of Music, and then they do one semester of Art, do Japanese all year long, and PDHP is a core subject which they do all year long. The difference from Year 7 going to Year 8 is that they don't do Japanese anymore, they just do art. If the kids are really excited about Japanese and they get to Year 8, they can do a lunchtime club and then they can choose it as an elective in Year 9 and 10. Um, English, Maths and Science stay the same in Year 8 and you can see that Geography goes into History. The only difference between Year 7 and Year 8 otherwise is in Technology and you can see the different streams of technology that they do just there. Uh, the reason that they're broken up into three classes is because we have 
two year seven classes, seven blue and seven maroon, but we then combine them all together and divide them into three different groups. These are practical subjects where they do a lot of hands-on work and they need to be in smaller groups so that they have access to more resources and facilities here at school, uh, like the sewing room and the woodwork room and the specialised computer room where they do CAD drawings. In Year 7, we require students to bring their own device. This is not something the school purchases, this is something that you get to choose what, what your child brings to school. What we would recommend is following the following device requirements. This ensures that the student's computer does all the things we're going to ask them to do on it. One of the things that's really important is that the device that you pick for your child, you would be able to assist them with. Obviously, as the teachers at school, we are more than happy to help the children. But as you can imagine, 30 different computers in one classroom, not every teacher is going to be an expert on every single one of those devices. So if you're comfortable with that device and your kid's comfortable with that device at home, that will help immensely. This year, we are not allowing students to have iPads anymore. They just don't have the technology capabilities that we require in Year 7. We do work, for instance, in mathematics where they need um, Excel and, and the version that you get on an iPad just isn't powerful enough for the kinds of things that we're doing in the classroom. So no iPads, no iPad minis. What every staff member has is a uh, MacBook Air. So if you bought your child a Mac computer, that is something that most teachers would have no problem assisting them with because that is the computer that they are used to and they are using every single day. Uh, it is a responsibility of the students that they bring their device charged every single morning to school and we would recommend when you're choosing the device that your child purchases for our school in Year 7 that it's something that the battery life can hold for because they will need to use it in almost every single class for the whole day. They don't use it during uh, lunch 1 and lunch 2 but it is used in most classes throughout the day. We have a technology policy that students will sign in week one uh, when they return to school. And this basically just says, this is what we're allowed to do on our computers. This is what we're allowed to use the school network for. And these are the consequences if we do the wrong thing and we understand that. We ask parents to read that policy as well. Don't worry, it's only two pages. Uh, and then you know what the kids are allowed to do. They know what they're allowed to do. And it's our happy days for everybody. C-Hub is a really important tool. This is how teachers communicate with you about grades, about uh, feedback on student work. It's where we post when assignments are due, when homework is due, and it's all available for you on C-Hub. I can't stress how important it is that you become familiar with this. And if you are having trouble and you're not sure how to log in and where to go to find information, please ask your pastoral care teachers. Um, they would be more than happy to assist you. If you're really struggling, please email me and I'll make a time to uh, talk you through it. And it's not difficult, but it's really valuable and super helpful. Most information goes through that system. It's our school intranet. Students use it as well. They use it every single day. It's where their timetable is. It tells them when they've got due work, otherwise known as homework. It tells them when they've got assignments versus assessment tasks and all that kind of thing. That has their grades on there. Really, really important. If you remember anything from this whole information session, please remember CHUB is important. Assessment in Year 7 uh, is around about one hour per day of homework. That's a total of five hours per week. We don't expect that Year 7 students are doing hours and hours on the weekend. Having said that, if your child is particularly active in sport or youth or some other type of extracurricular activity that they train for all afternoon during the school week, obviously that five hours would need to be done somewhere else. That's a general guide for how much outside of school time we expect kids to be working for. That time is used not just for homework, but for assessment tasks. We deliberately space out assessment tasks so that they're not being all handed out at the same time. And you can see on the screen in front of you the subjects that they have that they get assessment tasks for and how many they will have. So it says here, generally they have three formal assessment tasks per subject per year. So for instance, in mathematics, they might have an assessment task in term one, three, and four, and they'll have nothing in term two. That doesn't mean we're not assessing them. Of course, all the teachers are constantly assessing. It's just not 
written down and the kids don't call it a test or an assignment, but they're constantly checking in on how the kids are going. If you have any questions about assessment tasks or assessment in general, you can direct them to the class teacher of that subject, or if they're bigger questions than that, that's those heads of departments that I was talking about earlier. Well, thank you for coming to Smart Start and watching for 2021. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions that I wasn't able to answer in this video. My email address is just here. I look forward to meeting you next year. Thank you.